Let's stand up this morning. Let's stand up. It's a little bit different this morning. If you're, if you're, if you're new here, we're doing a worship Sunday. So it's going to be worship the whole service because we start a week of prayer. Once a month, we have a week of prayer. On the Sunday, we have a worship service beforehand to prepare us and get us ready for the week. And uh, so that's what we're going to be doing today, amen. And I wanted to share something. I, I don't know who, if you know who Pastor Lynn Hammond is. She's from, uh, we were, Mike and I were part of their church for quite a few years. And she shared something on Facebook recently that I loved. I thought it was perfect for this Sunday. And I'll just read it to you. And she says, she says, my spiritual father, Dr. Kenneth E. Hagan used to say, the highest kind of prayer is praise and worship. It will access God's presence and focus it on whatever trouble or conflict you might be going through. It will release heaven's forces to move on your behalf with an intensity no demonic foe can withstand. Amen? It will put you on the victory side even when defeat looks inevitable. That's why the Psalms written by King David, one of God's great warriors, are filled with praise. Praise magnifies the Lord. It doesn't make him bigger or mightier because he's already the almighty God, but it does magnify the effect of his power in our lives and circumstances. Amen. Isn't that so good? Praise is the highest form of prayer. Praise and worship. It's the highest form of prayer. That's So I love that we do this on a Sunday before a week of prayer because it sets us up. It gets our eyes off what's been going on in the week. And it turns and it focuses our attention on, on who he is and how awesome he is and how wonderful he is so that for this next week, we can get some stuff done in prayer. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, let's just lift up our hands this morning. We worship you, Lord. We give you all the glory. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Open your mouth this morning. Open your mouth this morning. Open your mouth. Oh, sing a song from your heart to the Lord. We worship you, Jesus. Defy the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. We sing praise is the highway. Praise is the highway to the throne of God. Praise is the highway to the heart. To the name of the Lord, He is our God. He will be praised. The idols, the idols will fall. The strongholds will break. Every weapon that forms the shadow. Praise is the highway 
to the throne of God. Praise is the highway to the heart of God. Praise is the highway to the move of God. Oh, praise is, we sing, oh, praise is the highway to the throne of God. Praise is the That's what we do this morning. That's what we choose to do this morning. It's a choice, isn't it? It's a choice. It's a choice. Sometimes we don't feel like doing it. Sometimes we're too tired. Sometimes our kids are crazy in the morning. They were during rehearsal, mine were today. <laughs> I was like, are we even gonna get through the set? My kids are lapping these chairs. But guess what? I'm choosing this morning, amen? I'm choosing this morning to praise him because he's so worthy to be praised. I'm gonna read a scripture real quick. Yeah, keep playing that. Isaiah 40, verse three says, prepare the way for Yahweh's arrival. Make a highway straight through the desert for our God. Every valley will be raised up, every mountain brought low, the rugged terrain will become level ground and the rough places a plain. Then, I love this part, then Yahweh's radiant glory will be unveiled and all humanity will experience it together. Believe it, for Yahweh has spoken his decree. I believe that's what we're doing this morning. I love that scripture. That scripture is a, is a, prop, is a prophecy, prophecy about John the Baptist. But I, there's a footnote in, in the Passion Translation that says, even now the voice of the Spirit is crying out in the wilderness for people's souls, bringing them to repentance in faith in Christ. Amen? So it might have been a prophecy for that day but it's still for us today, amen? As we praise, we prepare that highway, we prepare the way for him to move in this place, amen? Amen? Hallelujah, it's no light thing, but it's what we were created to do. Thank you, Lord. Just one word, you calm the storm that surrounds me. Just one word, 
the darkness has to retreat yes it does just one touch I feel the presence of heaven oh just one touch just one touch my eyes were open to see my heart can't help but
church. There's not a mountain that he can move. Come on, I want to hear you this morning. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God. Hallelujah. Do you believe that for your families, for your nation, for your city this morning? Hallelujah. There's nothing that he can't do. There's nothing that he can't do. Hallelujah. I declare this this morning over every single person in here and online. He's making the rough places a plain. He's making the rough places a plain in people's lives and their families and their relationships. Hallelujah. He's making rough places a plain. Thank you, Lord. Receive that right now. Receive it right now. Hallelujah. Businesses that are hurting, he's making those rough places a plain. Thank you, Lord. Relationships, marriages, families, he's making the rough places a plain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's doing it. We just have to believe it. Amen. We have to believe it. We have to believe it. And sometimes that takes us opening our mouth and saying something. You know what? We might not believe at first. <laughs> but the more it comes out of our mouth, it gets down in our heart and we believe it. Amen. If you're going through something today, a situation, I want to sing that bridge. You know what? I'm going to tell this story. Tell, you want me to tell this story? Um, and we've said that we've told this story a few times, but and some of you might not have heard it. But one time, Mike, um, I came home for. I'll tell my side of the story. I came home from work, and I, I looked at Mike, and I'm like, "How was your day?" And he instantly started bawling. We had only been married a couple years. I don't think I'd ever seen my husband cry quite like that before so it I knew it was serious and we had a financial situation come up in our business and it, accounts were frozen and things were taken away from us and he's like I don't understand I don't understand I, I don't I don't I don't understand what happened and at the time we were renting a house out with Colton and Kirsten and I saw Colton outside in the back and I ran out there and I said hey I need you to come inside now and I need you to pray with us because we have it we have a situation I don't even I don't even understand what it is yet but we need to pray so he came in with us and we got on our faces in prayer I still remember that I still remember just we were shouting and we were I don't remember everything that we said but man we were taking care of that thing in prayer and Mike felt to grab his guitar and sing, I'm full of joy and I've got the victory. Now, did he feel like he had the victory at that point? No, he was crying, singing, I'm full of joy and I've got the victory. And guess what? Because he made that decision to say, God, I believe what you say. I believe what your word says against what's going on. The next day, it was completely resolved. It was a complete mistake. It was completely resolved where the CRA said to him, this usually takes months. I don't, this usually takes months. It was like nothing ever happened. Happened. It was a complete mistake, but we made that choice. Have I made, have we, have I made some wrong choices in when situations come up? Oh yeah. Oh man. I've done the woe is me. I've done that. I've been there. But man, when you, make, when you make that right choice, when you choose to speak what he speaks and say what he says, man, the outcome is so much better. Amen. So if you're dealing with something today, you have an impossible situation. You have a rough place that needs to be made plain this morning. I just want us to declare this again and speak it out of your mouth. And just like Mike, he was crying. I'm full of joy and I got the victory. Did he feel that way? No, he did not. But by the end, he was actually, 
he was standing up, he was jumping, and he was singing it with all of his heart, and he knew it at that point. Amen? So let's sing, I will believe. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, we sing, I will believe. I will believe for greater things. Come on, church. There's no power like the power of Jesus. There's nothing like it. Let faith arise. Let all agree. There's no power like the power of Jesus. I believe that for our church this morning. I will believe for our families, for, greater for our marriages, for our businesses. There's no he can't do thank you Lord hallelujah thank you Lord there is nothing he can't do hallelujah Shout your name, 
shout your name filling up the skies with endless praise endless praise Yahweh Yahweh we love to shout your name
thank you for that name. We love that name. Thank you, Lord. We love that name. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for that name. The name that is above every name. The name that's been given to us. Thank you. There's such power in that name. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. star that night a king is born in Bethlehem our journey long we seek the light that leads to the hollow and major ground what fear we felt in the silent age four hundred years is gonna keep but broken by a baby's cry, rejoice in the hollow and major ground. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, God. you can be seated. If we can have the ushers pass out the offering emblems, that'd be great. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Just give him some praise in your seat once again. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Father. You are so good and you are so faithful. We choose just to praise your name, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Will we get to take communion this morning? Thank you, Lord. You know, as a kid sitting in communion, it was always kind of a somber time as a kid. You know, you get told, oh, be quiet. You just sit there and, you know, you wait for the moment where you eat your snack and get your drink. I, I was just being honest. When I was a kid, that's what it was. And at a time, we used Ritz crackers, so it was bonus. But we're kicking off, kicking off a week of prayer with a day of praise and worship. Communion shouldn't be a somber, quiet thing. Man, it should be a loud reminder to the enemy who we have coveted. Every opportunity when the enemy comes against me, I want to be like, oh yeah, by the way, do you know who I have covenant with? Yeah, that same guy that puts you where you're at? Yeah, the same guy that wrote the book. You know the ending. I know you do. Man, it should be so exciting to us and go. So when the enemy comes against you, like I, Jess was sharing about our testimony and something that happened to me, man, my first physical and natural response was, I don't know what to do. And immediately my spirit man goes, uh-uh, you know exactly what to do. You know what the Word says. We know that in the Word of God, Jesus said, this is my body. It's going to be broken for you. And it's somber to think back and, and look at all the pain and the stuff that he went through for you and me. But under the covenant that we have, man, it's a time of rejoicing. It's a time in the middle of a pandemic where we can go, no, I have covenant with the King of kings and Lord of lords. His body's already been broken for me. And whatever... The, that situation is that's come against you, you just go, nope, I can rejoice. I can choose to rejoice. Hallelujah. I haven't had a voice for the last, like, two weeks. That's why I've been quiet today. I'm waiting for my voice to come back. Some of you are relieved. You're like, you talk a lot, Mike. <laughs> but it's funny. I just rejoice. I'm still singing. It may sound horrible, but I'm still worshiping. I'll tell this quick story. When I was down in the States at an internship, we had this one kid named Steven. And he was a drummer. There was a good reason why he was a drummer. Because he was good at hitting things, not so good at the singing part. But he was one of my favorite people in the world to worship with. Because he didn't care. There was nothing that mattered to him more than taking time to worship. There'd be time I'd be downstairs, we all lived in this one big house. And I'd be downstairs, walk by our storage closet and utility closet. And if I was quiet, all of a sudden I'd be like, wait, what's that noise? And sure enough, it's Stephen in the closet with his iPod, singing at the top of his lungs, just praising God. He didn't care how bad he sounded. He didn't care who heard him. He just knew, if I don't praise, I'm going to miss what God has for me. If I don't praise, I'm going to get lost in my thoughts and think about all the stuff I got going on back home. If I don't praise, I'm going to give the enemy room instead. He goes, I don't care. He's like King David. He's like, I don't care how bad I sound, how foolish I look, I'm going to praise. So after a little while, man, I couldn't help myself. If he was in there, I'm like, well, I'm joining him. Into the utility closet we go. And every time I did, man, the presence of God would show up in a way like never before. Why? Because that's what he wants. He just wants you. That's why this covenant was left for you. He said, I'm going to make a covenant that's unbreakable because I want to spend time with my kids. I want to be close to each one of you. So when Jesus said to the disciples, I'm going to go, and they said, no, don't leave. He said, no, it's going to be better. It's going to be better for you if I go. So let's take hold of that body right now. And Father, we give thanks. We praise you. 
we rejoice in the victory that was won because your body was broken. That because you chose to make that sacrifice that we can live in wholeness. That our bodies don't have to be broken. We can live in healing and in your power. So we just rejoice in that victory, Father. And Lord, as we partake of it, we partake of it in victory through the covenant of Jesus Christ. We receive that this morning by faith in Jesus' name. And this one's the most exciting. The blood that washed away all our past. Because of this blood, when we go before God, it says He sees us the same way that He sees His Son, Jesus. You're like, whoa, I'm not quite Jesus yet. No, you, we were made in His image. When you repented, He's washed your sins away. He sees you the exact same way, without guilt, shame, condemnation, without a blotch, a spot, a blemish. Amen. So every time the enemy tries to remind you of what you failed at this week, of what you didn't do right this week, of how much you don't look like Christ, you go, uh-uh. You could even ask God, be like, hey, God, remember when I did that this week? He'd be like, what are you talking about? You repented. It says in his word that God puts it as far as the east is from the west. He won't even remember. You'll sound like a crazy person. Be like, Lord, but I did this this week. He's like, what? I don't remember that. It's forgiven. It's gone. So the devil tries to bring those things back, and Jesus said they're gone. He can't dig far enough. He can't go far enough to get them back. Amen. How many of you uh, could use their past wiped away? Man, I'm so thankful for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So why don't you stand to your feet as we partake of this one. Father, I just give you thanks and praise you and give you honor and glory for the blood of Jesus that you sent. That you sent your son to die for us, Lord God, so that we can stand before you without guilt, without shame, without condemnation, so that you would see us the same way as children of the Most High God. So we partake of this and we receive it right now by faith. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And because of that, we can come into His gates with thanksgiving. And we can boldly come, boldly come into His courts with praise. How many of you know when you belong to something, you go into it boldly? Everyone remembers their first day of class if they moved or, you know, their first day of school where they're kind of shy, they don't know who to talk to. That's not us. It's like coming back home. We go straight to the fridge. We can raid the cupboards. Why? Because that's our home. God says, you are a part of my family. We're not to feel like we're outside looking in. He says, come on in. Get in here, kids. What are you waiting for? And sometimes I think as Christians, we say, oh, he's so holy, he's so holy that we keep ourselves at a distance. Meanwhile, he's saying, all I want to do is spend time. Come. Come. Come to me, please. James 4, 8 says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. He's just waiting. There's nothing, as a dad, there's nothing better in the world than when you come home and your kids are sitting there with their hands raised. You know, I've always heard, you know, when you raise your hand, it's I surrender. But I read a book one time, and he goes, I see it. As a father, he, know, he says, I now see it. It's like, pick me up, Dad. I want to spend time with you. And after I heard that, I'm like, I can't get that image out of my head, that God's just saying, I want to spend time with you. Amen. So let's worship him. Let's praise him a little more this morning and rejoice in the covenant with God the Father, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you want to stand, you can stand. If you want to sit, you can sit. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm. Oh, light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. And here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say. You're all together, love me, all 
You know, I think I've, I've said this a few times on these worship Sundays, but you know, we don't, you don't have to leave this, this place. You don't have to leave. I don't like to say a feeling, but I'll just say it. You don't have to leave this feeling. <laughs> you can leave this building and still stay in this place. But like we said at the beginning, it is a choice, you know, and I get it, man. We leave, walk out that door. You maybe got kids. I'm hungry. I'm tired. I'm this, I'm that. And the to-do list of Sunday before Monday starts, but we can do it still connected. Amen. I'm going to endeavor. I'm going to, this is a challenge for me. Stay connected, Jessica. Stay connected. Amen. Amen. I was going to say something else, and now it's gone. Do offering. Absolutely. Praise is a choice. Choice and a privilege. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Well, because this is a week of prayer that we're kicking off, if you're not on our email list, find Colleen or one of the greeters they can give you the email the contact so you can be added they'll send out an email every day so we can be on the same page praying for the same thing there's power when we get in agreement over things amen, amen. there's power when we come together for one purpose hallelujah so I'm expecting big things and good things to come from it I'm expecting testimonies it's not just a week of prayer to say hey we're doing good as a church we prayed this week amen I believe God moves when we pray that there's going to be testimonies. People are going to be like, you won't believe what happened this week. I just got a call from my family. They've been believing God for this, and it just happened. We've been dealing with this situation. It just got taken care of. Amen. There's power in prayer. It's not just something we do. Oh, those are our announcements. Hallelujah. The other thing is a praise service. We get the privilege and the honor of doing offering this morning. So you'll see back there, Mr. Usherman, Mike. He's got a bucket next to him. And we're going to start doing some offering messages again. It's been a while since we've done them, since we've been, uh, we went online and all that kind of stuff. But I tell you what, the church doesn't do offering messages to bring in money for the church. That's God's job. He'll bring in money for the church. It'll always be taken care of. We bring offering messages so that you can be blessed, so that you can be following in kingdom principles and He can work in your life. When we choose to partake and give our tithes and offerings, we're giving permission for God to work and operate in our finances. Otherwise, He's got to go like this. He goes, uh, no tithes and offerings. I can't touch your finances. There's nothing I can do to bring them into your hands. There's a saying, if He can get it through you, He can get it to you. But man, when it comes to tithes and offerings, it should be an extension of our life of praise. Man, every time I get paid from a job or, or uh, you know, money comes into our business, I should go, praise the Lord, yes! I can't wait to give this offering. For God loves what? A cheerful giver. I'll be honest this morning, if you're a begrudging giver, just hold on to it. Why? Because it's not going to have any benefit to you. We're not here for your finances. We want to help you get in a place where you honor God with your heart and your finances come as an extension and a part of that. So I'm honest. If you are begrudgingly giving, don't. We want to see you be fruitful. We want to see you blessed. We want to see God operate in your life. We want to hear testimonies of how he's bringing finances and things into your hands so you can be a blessing. I've said this since the day one of pandemic. That church, that Christian's, when local businesses are hurting and people are suffering and don't have what they need, the church should have been the first one to be like, man, I've got more than enough. I heard your business is suffering. Well, here's a check to tie you over because God's been good to me. I remember the first time in 2008 uh, when, you know, the economy crashed. One of our favorite preachers, Jerry Savelle, he, he was at a gas station. And he had a, you know, a huge truck and SUV and another guy next to him has a big truck. And he goes, oh, I hate filling this thing up now. He says, what are you talking about? He goes, well, because of the economy. Jerry Savelle goes, well, I'm not taking part of that. He goes, what do you mean? He's like, I'm a part of God's kingdom. I'm not taking part in this economy. God's got me. He said, a matter of fact, I got you. I'm paying for your gas today. 
And the guy goes, wait, what? You, you can't just not partake. He goes, yes, I can. The kingdom of God is not the same as the kingdom of earth. I'm part of a different economy. I'm part of a different plan. I have a completely different source. And this morning, I believe God's saying, I want to be your source. I want to be your source. My business, personally, is just my source for my seed. But God is the source for me and my family. He'll take care of all the rest. He knows our needs even before we ask of them. Amen. So when we get money coming in, we should get excited, man. Be jumping for joy. Yes, as we bring our tithes and offering in. So as you go, when you drop off at the end of uh, service here, when you drop it off in that bucket, man, say, thank you, Lord, that I have seed to sow. Thank you, God, that I have something to give this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't forget, week of prayer, it starts today. Get on the email list. You can go to uh, victorylife.ca as well to get the prayer sheets. And as well, coming up December 7th to 18th, we're starting something fun called the 12 Days of Christmas. They're challenges that are going to encourage you to reach out to other people, your neighbors, the people in your workplace, people around you. You can even also enter to win a $50 Amazon gift card for yourself as well. But post your participation on either Facebook or Instagram and tag at Victory Life Kelowna or email hello at victorylife.ca. One entry per person per day. So if you do all 12 days of Christmas, you get 12 entries. Praise the Lord. But this was so fun. I remember when COVID first started and uh, the pastors were like, what can we do to you know, still reach out to our community? I'm like, why don't we just start encouraging our people to do it to their neighbors? You know, we'll make some videos and do it. And we had, my kids loved it. We made packages for other kids on the block. Just fun stuff for them to do at home. They had like sidewalk chalk and water balloons and fun summer stuff and little activities. Just something to do to bless our neighbors. Because we know they were at home just like everybody else. So my kids are there, you know, bringing buckets to the neighbors that we knew that had kids. And for some of them, it took like a year for them to figure out who did it. <laughs> but man, it was fun. And it got me encouraged. It got me excited about the opportunity that we have right now to reach out. There was a prophecy that came out almost a decade or more than a decade ago now. He said, in the days to come, the dark is going to get darker. But he said, that means the light gets lighter. Your opportunity to shine bright and to be a blessing and reach out to those around you has never, never, never been greater. Amen? So let's go be a light. Take part in that because it's going to be exciting. Christmas Day celebration service on the 25th. We're going to do it at 4.30 p.m. Um, we're going to be giving away 150 frozen turkey pot pies, gift cards, prizes, gifts for the children, and, of course, you know, goodies and hot apple cider afterwards because, you know, Christmas and goodies, they kind of go hand in hand. Um, you can donate and volunteer to help in an area. See Colleen. She's, she's in children's church, but she'll be in that lobby. Area. She's volunteering because we need more volunteers. Also, today we have refreshments, so don't run out the door. As you can see, Aaliyah has a lovely cart there full of refreshments. <laughs> Uh, so take some time to fellowship and uh, get to know the body of Christ here. But say this with me as we always say. Say, I am who God says that I am. I have what God says that I have. And I